everyone, what's up? Welcome back to my tutorial channel. Daniel's here and today I will finish topic 6, the last part, assessing normality. Using in practice, many statistical procedures require a sample to be taken from a population that follows approximately normal distribution. However, when we draw a symbol, it's hard to say whether the symbol comes from a normal distribution. So the main goal of this part is to examine whether a symbol comes from an approximately normal distribution. And it is sufficient to uh, use the following five tools. The first one is dot plots. The second one is box plots. Then histograms, steam and leap plots, and normal quantile plots. One thing I want you to uh, note that um, these five tools just to examine whether a symbol comes from an approximately normal distribution. We're not testing to see whether the symbol comes from an exactly normal distribution. And assessing normality is just significant for only small symbol because for large symbol, let's say when symbol size is more than uh, 30, by central limit theorem, the central limit theorem already guarantees that the symbol mean should follow normal distribution. So assessing normality is not significant for uh, a large symbol. And the general procedures, the general procedure to examine whether a symbol follows an approximately normal distribution is just detecting um, a sign of non-normality. So we will reject the assumption that a population is approximately normal if a small symbol has any of the following features. The first feature, the symbol contains an outlier. Number two, the symbol, uh, the symbol exhibits a large degree of skewness. Number three, the symbol is multimodal. In other words, it has more than one distinct mode. If the symbol has none of uh, the preceding features, we will treat the population as being approximately normal. So we have three features to be tested, outliers, skewness, and multimodality. So let's go to the third tools, dot plots. Here is an example. Use dot plot to assess normality. Example 1, the accuracy of an oven thermostat is being tested. The oven is set to 360 Fahrenheit and the temperature when the thermostat turns up is recorded. A symbol of size 7 used the following results. 358, 363, 361, 355, 367. 352 and 368. Is it reasonable to treat this as a symbol from an approximately normal population and explain? So in this example, we are going to construct the dot plots and use the dot plot to examine the three features. So here is the dot plot of this symbol. How to uh, construct a dot plot, I have shown you I have shown you in topic 2. So I'm not going to go um, in detail how to construct the dot plots here. And when we look at the dot plots, there is no evidence about outlier. And we don't see anything revealing about uh, skewness. And there's no evidence that the population has more than one mode. 
So there is no sign of uh, non-normality. Therefore, we can treat this as a symbol from an abru uh, approximately normal population. Another example of using the plot to assess normality. Example 2, at a recent health fair, several hundred people had their post raised measured. A simple random sample of sick records were drawn, and the post raised in peace per minutes were 68, 71, 79, 98, 67, 75. Is it reasonable to treat this as a symbol from an approximately normal population and explain? So here again, we construct the dot plots. And when we look at the dot plot, we see that there's one odd number that stays away from the uh, majority. So this is an evidence that the symbol has an outlier. So we have detected a sign of non-normality. Therefore, we should not treat this as a symbol from an approximately normal population. So that's how we use dot plus to assess normality. The second Statistical tool to assess normality is box plots. So here is an example. Use box plots to assess normality. Example 3 An insurance adjuster obtains a symbol of 20 estimates in hundreds of dollars for repair to cars damage in collisions. Follow all the data. Is it reasonable to treat this as a symbol from an approximately normal population and explain? Uh, to see if this data set is from a normal uh, population, we first construct the box plots. And how to construct the box plots, I don't have to show you here because we have learned um, box plot in topic 2. So this is the box plot of this data set and there is no evidence of outlier, no um, X mark here, so no evidence of outlier. And the box plot looks, uh, looks lightly skewed but it's not strongly skewed so um, the box plot does not exhibit a large degree of skewness. And there is no evidence that the population has more than one mode. Usually, box plots fail to uh, examine uh, unimodality. So, we can treat this as a symbol from an approximately normal population because there is no sign of um, non normality. Another example of box plus to assess normality. A recycler determines the amount of recycled, uh, recycled newspaper in cubic feet. Collectors is weak. Following are the results for a symbol of 18 weeks. Is it reasonable to treat this as a symbol from an approximately normal population and explain? So the first step is construct the box plots. And here on the box plots, we can see there is one outlier. This number is around 48.34. And also we can detect a strong skewness of this box plots. So there are two sides of um, non-normality. Therefore, we should not treat this as a symbol from an approximately normal population. Usually, we need only one sign um, of a non-normality. We can say that uh, we cannot treat the symbol as a symbol from an approximately normal population. Here, we have two sides, skewness and a liar. 
So that is how we use bot plot to assess normality. Now, the, uh, one of the most powerful tool to assess normality is histogram. Let's consider example 5. Diameters was measured in millimeters for a simple random sample of 20 gray AX from a certain farm. The results were 58, uh, I'm sorry, 59, 60, 60, 56, 59, 56, 62, 58, 60, 59, 61, 59, 61, 61, 63, 60, 56, 58, 63, 58. Construct a histogram for these data. Is it reasonable to treat this as a sample from an approximately normal population? So of course, the first step is construct a histogram. And how to control histogram, I have shown you at topic 2, so I'm not going to go over it in details. Here, this is the histogram of the data set. And we see that uh, there is no outlier. And uh, we can see that this histogram does not reveal any outlier. And we don't have a strong degrees of skewness, and we have only one mode. So we can treat this as um, a symbol from an approximately normal distribution. Another example of using histogram to assess normality, example 6, a shoes manufacturer is testing a new type of leather uh, sole. A simple random symbol of 22 people wore shoes with the new sole for a period of four months. The amount of wear on the right shoes was measured for its portion. The results in thousands of an inch were like this symbol. Is it reasonable to treat this as a symbol from an approximately normal population and explain? So of course the first step we construct the histogram and on the histogram even though there's no sign of um, outlier but we can see that this histogram is strongly skewed to the right. So there is a sign of non-normality, non, um, therefore we cannot treat this symbol as a symbol from uh, as a symbol from an approximately normal population. So that's about histogram. Now we go to steam and leap plots. Steam and leap plots is similar to histogram. However, steam and leap plots is easier to um, to construct by hands, and histogram is easier to construct by um, technologies. So it depends on your situation, whether you have, you're using technologies or you're working by hands. If you just uh, want to assess normality by hands, I suggest you to go for steam and lead plus. But if you have um, technologies with a lot um, technologies and with like decimal places values, then you should go for histogram. Um, so how to use steam and lead plot to assess normality? Example 7. A psychologist measures the time it takes for each of the 20 rats to run a maze. The times in seconds are in this, exam, uh, in this symbol. Is it reasonable to treat this as a symbol from an approximately normal population and explain? Here we have all of these uh, number are two digits with no decimal places. So we're going to use the first digits as the steam and the last digits as the leaf. And we contract the steam and leaf plots. And once we have constructed the team and leaf, uh, leaf plots, when you look at 
this plot, you see that um, there is no strong evidence about our liar. There is no evidence about skewness because this simply plot is kind of symmetric. And there is only one mode. So we can treat this as a single form. Uh, normal, approximately normal population. Now we go to the last tool of today. Normal quantile plots. Compared to the first four plots, normal quantile plot is considered to be more complex because of how um, it is constructed. And in topic two, I showed you how to construct uh, dot plots, spot plots, steam and leaf plots, histograms, but I didn't uh, show you how to construct a normal quantile plot. So today, before I show you how to use normal quantile plot to assess normality, I would like to show you how to construct a normal quantile plot. And I'm going to start with a very small symbol with psi n is equal to 5. Here I have a, a symbol of psi 5. 3.0, 3.3, 4.8, 5.9, And I want to construct the normal quantile plot. Um, to construct a normal quantile plot, the first step is rearrange the symbol in increasing order. Here, luckily, the symbol is already in increasing order. But in case that they're not in increasing order, you have to rearrange the symbol into increasing order before you do any other uh, steps. Step 2, I'm going to make a new symbol of psi phi with a number with the numbers are evenly placed in the um, on the on the real line in the interval from 0 to 1. So to make such phi numbers, I'm a start with 1 over 2n and then 3 over 2n of 5 over 2n and so on. So the first number is here, n is 5, so 2n is 10. 1 over 10 is 0.1 and so on. Now I have a, a new uh, symbol of the new phi numbers. The step 3, I have to find a z-score of the phi new numbers. And after that, I combine the z-score with the five symbol numbers at the beginning into the order pair. So 3 is paired with negative 1.28, 3.3 is paired with negative 0.52, 4.8 is paired with 0, and so on. Now I have five order pairs, and I can plot the five order pairs on the coordinate systems and I, I got my normal uh, quantile plots. So that's how I construct the normal quantile plot for a symbol. Now how we use normal quantile plot to assess normality. This is the normal quantile plot that I constructed using the symbol of phi numbers. And I noticed that these phi dots represent for the phi order pairs they cluster around a trade line. They tend to trade up. So I can make conclusion that this symbol is, is from an approximately normal distribution. So for the by using the normal quantile plots, we not we are not examining the three features, skewness, outliers, and uh, unique modalities. But the normal quantile plots just use the um, uh, look at the five order pairs that we constructed. And if they follow a trait side, we have the symbols is from an approximately normal distribution. Otherwise, the symbol is not from a normal distribution, um, 
distributed population. Now we are going to compare the five statistical tools that we have learned today in assessing normality. So today we have learned how to use dot plots, bot plots, histogram, steam and lead plots, normal quantile plot to assess normality. Now we are going to compare them. For dot plots, dot plots are excellent in detecting um, outlier and multimodalities. Dot plots sometimes also can be detect skewness, but it's not um, a good tool to detect skewness. Usually for skewness, we can use bug plus or histogram. Bug plus, bug plus are excellent for detecting outliers and skewness, but not for multimodality. Uh, I can say that bug plus are impossible to detect multimodality. Histogram, histograms are excellent for um, examining skewness and multimodality, but is not good for outliers. Steam and flip plots is excellent to detect the skewness, and also actually is is good to detect multimodality um, and outliers as well, but actually. Um, it's just excellent for detecting the skewness. Normal quantile plot is not uh, used to the, the to uh, examine the five the three features outliers, skewness, and multimodality. However, it also can be excellent to detect um, outliers because when we look at the um, the the order pairs, if there is one or two uh, dots that stay away from the trait line, then there should be an outlier. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching my view. I hope you guys enjoyed my view. And uh, that, this is the last part of topic 6. The next view I will um, work on topic 7. Bye and see you next time.